Hello, I'm Maria Hall Brown, and this is LA Currents. Well, she is the first woman to represent District 7 in the city of Los Angeles. I'm delighted to be joined today by Council Member Monica Rodriguez. So nice to have you here. Thank you for having me. Absolutely. All right, well, there's an old proverb that says, tomorrow belongs to the people who prepare for it today. And I know a lot of really great work went into District 7 in 2021, and I'm sure a lot of it is going to reap rewards in 22. So let's kind of take a look back a little bit. Uh, the first thing I really want to hear about is uh, a space in which young Angelinos can be heard, which is entitled the Youth Development Department. What is it and how is it going? So the Youth Development Department was really inspired by the leadership and advocacy of young people from throughout our city who were fighting for their voice to be heard at City Hall. We've also created the Olivia Mitchell Youth Council. It will be comprised of young Angelinos between the ages of 16 to 25 years of age, two individuals per council district. These are paid positions because we value the contributions that they're going to be making to help us inform the work that we do within this department. Just the awareness of how government works is going to be invaluable. I think it's imperative for young people or people of any age to be engaged in their local government. I, you know, I'm here for just a, a blip of time and so many of us are and it, it's a privilege to be in these roles. But frankly, sustainable change comes from people being involved and engaged in their local government. And for me to inspire young people to be more constructive partners and understanding how it works so that together we can help create sustainable change in communities is what I you know, seek to do uh, with the time that I have available. All right, well, there's not just the youth. I mean, there's a lot of things that you have been sort of in the forefront. Um, public safety is definitely one of your priorities and you are very much a leader in that realm. Not an easy world to be in because of what we have witnessed in terms of discontent with you know, police, etc. So uh, what are the topics that are on the table and how are they being handled? Well, I think we have a multitude of you know, forward-facing uh, opportunities to address here in the city of Los Angeles. Obviously, we've had this unprecedented circumstances, uh, one that has shed, you know, brought to light a lot of very complicated, nuanced issues. Um, but, you know, frankly, we have to do better at out aligning, just like I discussed with the youth department, we have to do a much better job of having alignment with the resources and accountability with everything that we do. Uh, we have to sh demonstrate our commitment to uh, making sure that we have greater responsiveness uh, in our communities, regardless of what zip code you live in. Do you think we're redefining the meaning of public safety? Well, I think it's, you know, it's, it's multifaceted and it's complicated, and we do need our um, partners to assist and support us. We also still very much need the community's participation, uh, you know, Public safety is a shared responsibility. We need to be partners with law enforcement to help create a safer community. We need to be communicative about the things that we see, and that will never cease. I think that's always going to be a responsibility that every Angelino has uh, to share that information and to uh, make sure that you know we can be proactive in doing very uh, important crime prevention methods, not just waiting to, you know, not, not just when we need to make that 911 call. How are the Cool Streets programs working? And what exactly have you been able to gauge how they're helping and what's happening with them? Well, they certainly reduced the heat island effect for about 10 degrees in the areas, and we were prioritizing in my district Cool Street uh, installations around many of our schools. In one area in Silmar, for example, it's adjacent to both our recreation center and one of our local high schools. But in addition to that, it's about building our tree canopy. That is going to help mitigate a lot of the heat in the San Fernando Valley. I mean, as a lifelong Angelino and Valley resident, the heat in the Valley is no joke. We need to continue to make every effort to mitigate the effects of climate change. We feel it every summer. It's very real and we need to continue to make greater strides in investing in these types of innovations. So many big picture issues you know, face so many of the council members here in Los Angeles. And of course, homelessness is top of mind for everybody. And I know that some programs were put in place into, into 2021 and there are aspirational goals you know, for 2022 and beyond. But how are the ones that were put in place working? How is safe parking going? How is the shelter you know, expansion going? How are the, you know, the tiny house projects going? How are all those things going that uh, are, again, 
planning for you know a better tomorrow requires action today issues. right well and so having come on the council four years ago obviously uh, it was uh, somewhat of a, of a slow start in kind of watching the growth of that work uh, I really used my own district and the circumstances in my district to be the pilot for how we might address these issues citywide uh, from leading the first, you know, I was the pioneer of the, the encampment to home process that required intensive outreach. We had an encampment at Pacoima that had 67 individual. It's the single largest encampment in the entire city where 100% of the individuals were housed. And uh, that came as a result of the collaboration with the state coming through with additional resources. And so when, you know, honestly, through the course of the pandemic, we finally started to see the state coming with the additional resources that were necessary after residents in our city taxed themselves to provide us these resources to build the housing. Finally, the state has come in and now we're seeing greater resources coming down also from the federal government that support us doing this work. And so I think where, where we were seeing some of the, you know, the, the challenges with our own limited means uh, to build the kind of housing that we needed, we've seen the state step in with additional resources that allowed us to do the Project Room Key, for example, that uh, was doing master leasing of large uh, motel spaces that allowed us to rapidly house a great number of people and it accelerated our progress tremendously. Doesn't mean that we still don't have a great deal more to do. And one of the biggest challenges that we have in the city is, well, you know, we can take these uh, individuals and put them into housing, but without the supportive services, all we're doing is housing some of the challenges of what these individuals are experiencing and bringing them inside. So it really does require the case management and some of the uh, ancillary services that are frankly the obligation of the county. We need greater collaboration and partnership uh, with some of these other uh, governmental agencies in order to see the full success. And, and on a personal note, you know, how have you, as you know, someone that stepped in 2017, obviously things got very different in 2020, and now we're sort of maybe opening the doors and the windows and you know, readdressing things. How are you? How are you feeling and faring? You know, for me, I have uh, I find myself that I'm most steady in moments of crisis mm. because I think it's important that we are. Uh, particularly as leaders. I, I had many friends who were uh, very shaken by the constant turn of events that we were going through through the course of the pandemic. And they would always ask me when they should worry. I said, you should worry when I'm worried. And they said, well, you're never worried. I said, you're right, because I can't be. Because we have to be steady and stable and making sure that we uh, chart a course forward that provides comfort for people. Uh, I, I'm so proud of my staff and how we responded uh, in the wake of what was happening because our community needed us. Uh, they didn't know who to turn to. And for members of my community that are very, in some cases, very ill-resourced, uh, we had to step in and we had to be the family member that was unable to be with them. We had to you know, make the food deliveries. We were expanding uh, food pantries. And um, you know, for me, it's the greatest privilege to serve and be of service to my community, one that I've lived in my whole life. And, uh, you know, I just, uh, for me, I wake up every day with the gratitude of knowing that I have a job that allows me to make a difference, and I'm just dedicated to doing that for the people of Los Angeles. So if people want more information about what's going on in Council District 7 or want to offer you some sort of, uh, you know, input from their perspective, what's the best way? We invite them to visit my website. My entire staff is listed there, www.monicarodriguez.org. Thank you very, very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you for all of your grand intentions and all of your wonderful work. I look forward to talking to you again. Likewise, thank you. All right. And that's a wrap on this LA Currents.